Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to compare the eight different x86 based single board computers that I previously reviewed on this channel. And specifically that means looking at four boards from DF Robot, two boards from Udo, one board from Seed Studio, and one from Digital Loggers. So, here we have our eight x86 based SBCs, and it's always nice to see so many single board computers in one place. Note that, like the manufacturers of some of these boards, I'm using x86 as the shorthand for any processor based on the Intel x86 instruction set, including its 64 bit derivatives. This means that, rather than having an ARM CPU like we find on a Raspberry Pi, all of these boards are based on an x86, an x86-64, or an AMD-64 CPU. In fact, all of these SBCs are 64-bit. So let's now look at each board in turn, starting over here with the cheapest and moving through to the most expensive. Right, our first board is a very good value curiosity called the Atomic Pi. This is actually a repurposed robot control board, and it's got a quad-core Intel Atom Z8350 CPU under this nice large heatsink, which runs at 1.44 GHz base frequency and bursts to 1.92. And we've also here got Intel HD graphics, 2 GB of DDR3 RAM, and 16 GB of onboard flash storage. Connectivity is pretty limited. We've got a single USB 3.0 port, a header for an additional USB 2.0 port, and you have to power the Atomic Pi using the GPIO connector we find underneath, unless you buy a breakout board. But the key thing about this board is the price, because the supplier, Digital Loggers, sell this for $35.88 in the form you see it here, or if you buy a breakout board, they sell it for $59 exactly. Now, in theory, you can run Windows on the Atomic Pi, but even I wouldn't try and install Windows 10 on its 16 gigabyte eMMC flash storage, and so it's best to use the Atomic Pi with a lightweight Linux distro. And so, for example, here I'm running a Lubuntu, which runs very nicely on this board and gives you a good experience for things like word processing and local media playback, and also a browsing the web. So there we are, the Atomic Pi an x86 base SBC in limited supply, but it's a great value piece of kit, particularly if you're prepared to tinker. Next, we have these two very similar looking boards, now known as the Latte Panda version 1, 232 and a 464. These were initially based on the Intel Atom Z8300 CPU, but the hardware now on sale features the same Z8350 used in the Atomic Pi. So these boards both have a quad-core 1.44 GHz base frequency CPU, as well as Intel HD graphics. As the name suggests, the 232 board is equipped with 2 GB of RAM and 32 GB of onboard flash storage, Last year, 464 has got 4 gigabytes of RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard flash storage. Both boards also have one USB 3 port and two USB 2 ports, as well as an onboard Arduino Mega for GPIO control. Turning to price, the 232 model is $89 bare or $119 with Windows 10 activated, whilst the 464 is $149 bare or $209 with Windows 10 activated. And it's important to note that these original Latte Panda boards really are primarily intended to run Windows 10 because they don't have a standard bootloader, which means it's difficult to install Linux, although it is possible on newer versions of the boards. If we transition to Windows on the 232, here we are. We can see that with a few basic apps installed, if I open up this PC, that the internal flash storage is just over half full. We've got about 12.7 gigabytes free of a 28.2 gigabytes available. The desktop experience in Windows is also pretty reasonable for a basic Windows PC. You won't get the same experience here as on a much more powerful PC, but for things like a web browsing, web processing, basic media playback, it works pretty well. And indeed, in my view, the Latte Panda version 1 232 remains the cheapest SBC on which you can reasonably run Windows 10. 
to help compare the board to others, I've also run Passmark, which resulted in a score of a 300. Transitioning to the Latte Panda version 1464, if we again open up this PC to look at the internal flash storage, you'll see that again with a few apps installed, we've got a 44.3 gigabytes free out of 57.4 available. So we've got a lot more flexibility with our storage here on the, the 464 model. And of course, we've got an extra two gigabytes of memory. So you get a much better Windows experience on the Latte Panda version 1464 compared to the 232. And if you're wondering, I have run Passmark here as well. And here a score we get is a 430. Next, we have the Udo X86 Advanced Plus, which along with the Latte Panda Delta and the Odyssey X86 J4105 sits at the price performance sweet spot for X86 SBCs. All of these boards sell for about $200 and are a lot more powerful than the three we just looked at. Turning specifically to the Udo X86 Advanced Plus, this is based on a Celeron N3160 running at 1.6 GHz, bursting to 2.25. We also have Intel HD400 graphics, 4 GB of DDR3 RAM and 32 GB of onboard flash storage. There are then three USB 3 ports, an HDMI port, and two mini display ports. So you can drive three displays with this board. And we've also got an onboard microcontroller, which is an AT Mega 32U4, which gives you GPIO connectivity. We look under the board at even more exciting things because under here we've got a couple of M.2 slots, one of which will take a Wi Fi module, and the other of which will take a SATA SSD. And for connectivity, we've also got here a SATA port, data port, and a SATA power point. So there's lots of connectivity on this board. The Udo X86 Advanced Plus is now in version 2 and sells for $174. And for an extra $7.90, you can fit it in this rather nice acrylic case. And if we go across to Windows 10 here running on the board on a SATA M.2 SSD, we get a very good Windows 10 experience. Windows 10 works very nicely on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus. And uh, I've run Passmark and got a score of a 984, which compares very well to the score we got previously on the version 1 Latte Pandas. Greetings, here I am back again with uh, this, the Latte Panda Delta 432. This is based on a quad-core Intel Celeron N4100 with a 1.1 GHz base frequency bursting to 2.4, coupled with Intel UHD Graphics 600, 4 GB of DDR4 RAM and 32 GB of a onboard flash storage. There's then a 4K HDMI socket over here, three USB 3 sockets there, and two GPIO connectors, which are linked to the same 80 Mega 32U4 microcontroller we just saw on the Udo X86 board. Underneath are some exciting things as well. That's always good to see, isn't it? For start, we've got a, a display connector here, an EDP connector, again 4K, touch panel connector, so we can connect a touch screen here if we wish. And there's also two M.2 slots, one of which can take an NVMe SSD. As I'm sure you've seen, the board is very slim indeed, even with the, the cooler on the top. It's a very neat uh, design and it costs $188 bare or $228 with Windows 10 activated. There's also a great $19 case called the Titan, which turns the board into a really a pocketable device, uh, as you can see. And uh, here we've got access to the GPIO connectors through these are slots on the top, but there are these uh, covers that just to clip on, if you don't want access to GPIO, you can cover those, which is a uh, very neat indeed. I really like the design of this board. If we nip across into Windows, again, I'm running Windows from the EMMC storage here. The 32 gigabyte storage on the Latte Panda Delta has given us what a 13.7 gigabytes free. Although of course, on this board, we could be running Windows if we wanted from an NVMe SSD. And the Windows experiences are pretty good. Everything's running pretty nicely. I obviously don't have time in this video to show you lots of things running on all of the boards, but do remember I've got a comprehensive review video of every board I'm featuring here, and I'll give you links in the video description. But I have run Passmark again, so we can compare things, 
And here the pass mark rating is a 1038, which just pips the Udo XA6 Advanced Plus. Next, we come to the Odyssey X86 J4105, which, like the Udo and Latte Panda boards we were just looking at, is based on a Celeron CPU. This time a J4105 with 1.5 GHz base frequency, which bursts to 2.5. There's also Intel UHD 600 graphics and 8 GB of DDR4 RAM. The Odyssey comes in two versions, the 800 and the 864, with the latter having 64GB of onboard flash storage, which we can see here on this model, which is an 864 version. There's also a vertical full-size HDMI port, and we've also got here two Ethernet ports, which is a particular feature of this board. And then on top of that, we've got two USB 2 ports, two USB 3 ports, one of which is USB-C, and masses of a GPIO connectivity. We've also got a standard SATA port, some SATA power ports, and two M.2 slots, one of which can take an NVMe SSD, and the other of which can take a SATA SSD or a cellular module. Prices start at $188 for the 800 model without onboard flash, rising to $218 for the 864 model with 64GB of a EMMC, and $258 if you want to also have Windows 10 activated. Seed Studio also sell this rather nice case for $19.90. The uh, body of this case is made from uh, anodized aluminium. This is a metal case, not a plastic case. There's the front. There's obviously the back with all the connectivity and a little, uh, nice little switch there. And the base of the case is plastic with good uh, ventilation for cooling. And one of the things I really like about this case, let's put it the right way around, is that the, the top is clear, but also easily removable because it's held in place by magnets. So there's a little push thing down here, which does that, and I can therefore lift up the top like that. And we can therefore get inside to access the GPIO pins, change drives around, things like that. And then when you've done that, you can take the top, just show you there where the magnets contact these little metal pieces there, and this just drops back in and is magnetically held back in place. And there's even on this case some little rubber feet on one edge, so if you wish you can use this like a, a very smaller tower PC. So let's nip through into Windows, and uh, here we are. And again, the Windows experience is uh, very good, even better than we get on the Udo X86 Advanced Plus or the uh, Latte Panda Delta, because of course we've got 8 gigabytes of RAM here. And I'm running Windows from the EMMC flash storage, and I've run Passmark, and we've got a score here of 1356, which comfortably outperforms all the other boards we've looked at so far in this video. Moving into the home straights, we get to the Latte Panda Alpha and the Udo Bolt. These boards are a lot more powerful than the others we've looked at so far in this video, but they also cost significantly more. So let's see what you get for your extra money. Firstly, the Latte Panda Alpha has the same form factor as the Latte Panda Delta, and also fits in the same Titan case. This particular board is first generation, with a dual-core Intel M37Y30 CPU with a 1 GHz base frequency boosting to 2.6, and Intel HD Graphics 615. However, due to component supply shortages, the Latte Panda Alphas currently on sale use an M38100Y CPU with a 1.1 GHz base frequency boosting to 3.4. There's a 8 GB of RAM on all Latte Panda Alphas and the same uh, three USB 3 ports and the GPIO connectors we saw on the Latte Panda Delta. And underneath things are exactly the same as the Delta as well, except for the fact that the uh, M.2 slots here are slightly more flexible because it's possible to use a SATA or an NVMe SSD on a Latte Panda Alpha. Split the board back again the right way up, keep it happy and let you know that there are three models of Latte Panda Alpha currently on sale. The 800S, which has no onboard storage, which costs $379. The 864S for $409, which has 64 gigabytes of EMMC flash storage on board. And the 864S with Windows 10 activated, which costs $449. 
Note that the S denotes a model with the upgraded processor, and that here the model I've got is an 864. If we run on Windows, here we are, performance is really good. And if you've been watching this channel for some time, you may remember that in my episode Latte Panda Alpha Week, I used the Latte Panda Alpha to edit the video itself in DaVinci Resolve 12.5, which worked very well indeed. Back with today, I have of course run a pass mark, and here it is, we've got a score of a 1959, which is the highest we've seen so far in this video. And I must stress, that the Latte Panda Alpha 864S currently on sale would achieve an even higher score than the 864 board being tested here. Last and by no means least, here we have the Udo Bolt, which technically shouldn't even be in this video. Why? Because it's not really an SBC, because it's got its memory fitted in these sodium slots here, so the memory isn't on the board, which means it doesn't meet an SBC definition. But if I hadn't included the UDU bolt in this video, I'm sure it'd have got a lot of complaints. Now, the bolt is available in two versions, the V3 and the more powerful V8. This is a V8, and uh, this is based on a Ryzen V1605B embedded CPU with a, a two gigahertz base frequency boosting to a 2.6, and it's got Radeon Vega 8 graphics. The Bolt has got 32 gigabytes of onboard flash storage, and you can fit up to a 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in the sodium slots here on the back of the board. In terms of connectivity, there is a lot of it. We've got two Type-A USB 3 ports here, two more ports here, USB 3 and the Type-C uh, form factor. We've also got two 4K full-size HDMI ports, which is a pretty good, isn't it? And then, like on many of the other boards, we've got an onboard 80 mega 32 UA microcontroller offering lots of GPIO connectivity via connectors here on the edge of the board. If we flick things over, you'll find underneath we've got three M.2 slots. One here will take a wireless module because there isn't wireless natively on the board, and then the two other M.2 slots will take a SATA and an NVMe SSDs. And we've also got a SATA port here, a standard SATA port and SATA power, so you've got lots of drive options on the UDU Bolt. We flip the board back over the right way round, there it is, much happier to be right way up again. I'll tell you about the price, which is a, wait for it, $418. There's also a very nice case available from UDU, as you can see here. This is a, a metal case, very, very tough case. This is a $32 case. There's even a mounting in the base of the case, if you can see it in there. You can even mount a two and a half inch drive in there. And as you can see here, you've got access to the SATA port and GPIO on the side of the case. This is a very well thought out case, very, very nice piece of kit that, and it would sit happily obviously on a desk or by a TV as a media PC, something like that. If we go to a running desktop, we discover that Oh, we're in Ubuntu 18.04 Bionic Beaver, as I haven't got Windows 10 installed on the Udo Bolt. But uh, do not fear, I did install Windows 10 on the Udo Bolt on an NVMe SSD when I first tested it, and I obtained a pass mark score of 3192, which clearly blows all the other boards here out of the water. This said, I would rate the Odyssey X86 J4105 as the best value X86 single board computer that I've reviewed to this point in time, closely followed by the Latte Panda Delta. Single board computers with an X86 processor are clearly a very different proposition to an ARM-based board such as a Raspberry Pi. Not least, the ARM-based boards tend to be a lot cheaper. But this said, there are occasions when it's useful to be able to run Windows or a mainstream Linux distribution on a small board. And in that context, I hope you found this comparison of the boards I looked at here to be useful. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,